Hi everyone, Barry Owen back again uh, with Rose Power. Hello Barry. Good to have you Rose. Um, today we're going to do our next session in our Wowza Video API talk. And today we're going to focus on things a little more advanced. So how you can create live streams with recordings or VOD streams. Um, a recording is an MP4, a VOD stream is an HLS archive. Um, different use cases, you may want one, you may want both. And then we'll talk a little bit about custom stream targets and, and how you might use those and what those are for. So let's just jump right in. Um, we're back in Postman like we have been previously. We have a new payload, slightly different. We've got a couple of things here that enable the recording for this live stream. So we're going to go ahead and create it. And then while that's while that's cooking, you're going to see we're going to come back over here. We're going to refresh our page, and we're going to notice that now we have a brand new live stream. And that one is you know the one we just created with recording. Um, we're not going to send. We're not going to actually take the time to send anything to this particular transcoder. Um, I've done that previously, so we have some recordings saved, and we're just going to look and and see how you can get those and, and understand what's going on with the API. So the next thing we're going to do, and, and, and again, I'm not going to, I'm not going to start the transcoder this time. We just, we know it exists. It's over there. Um, but what I am going to do is I'm going to look and see what recordings may I may have. And in this case, I'm getting all of the recordings in my account. So, you know, what you're going to do here is you're going to get a list back and you're you know in this case i think i only have two right so there's a there's a couple recordings here it's going to tell you their their original transcoder these recordings were from and this could be multiple recordings from the same transcoder or it could be a single recording from many transcoders but you can differentiate that again by the somewhat all-powerful transcoder id we've talked about before um, you get the state you know, whether the recording is completed and you'll get the name and, you know, other information like the, the start date, the created date, things like that. And if you go into user interface and you click on the recordings tab, you'll see the same thing. So you'll see that we have a couple, um, a couple recordings saved over here. As far as VOD streams go, very similar. You can get the list of VOD streams for a particular account. And in this case, I have two as well. Um, one, was, one was created, you know, they were created on different transcoders, if you'll see in different sessions. And again, if you go over here and you look at VOD streams, uh, you're gonna see the same things over here. Um, you can also get the VOD streams for just a particular transcoder. So in this case, we're going to call this, and there aren't any. Um, you know, we, we created a transcoder, but we didn't start it. We didn't create any assets. So in that case, they're just not going to be any there. There are a couple of questions for you that I see come up in the community forums a lot. And the very first step there, when you uh, clicked on create a live stream with the recording, uh, the response, does that have the recorder ID? And how do I differentiate that from the transcoder ID? It does not, right. um, because the recording hasn't been created yet. That makes sense. So the recordings get created when you stop the transcoder. I see. And what we'll talk about with when we start talking about custom stream targets is we'll talk about some ways to how you can use a custom stream target to effectively create clips so that you, you don't have an entire recording, but you can create, you know, sections. Okay. So that ID that I'm seeing, that's the transcoder ID, just so people are clear on that. And we'll yeah, this, I, this ID here is your transcoder ID. All right, so very quick, very simple, right? So you you create your stream, you run, you get your you get your results. Um, in a future session, we'll talk a little bit about now uh, one of the new features of Wazza Video is, is the ability to manage these assets within the UI. 
That's a tease for the future. Next up, um, custom stream targets. So what might you use a custom stream target for? When you, when you start a live stream in, in, in Waza video, you obviously get a playback URL that's delivered to you via CDN. Um, you might also want to send that stream to a social media platform or somewhere else. Um, maybe you want to send it to an internal endpoint for some reason. You know, maybe you're doing a different, maybe you're recording it yourself somehow. Um, there's many reasons you might want to have a custom target to, to various different locations. And it's one of the, one of the other interesting use cases for a custom target is you can create a custom stream target that can, that can create VOD streams and effectively by enabling and disabling the target, you can then create little hunks of VOD streams that don't necessarily have to be the full duration of the record of the live stream. Uh, and in order to demonstrate that, I'm actually going to go over here and I, I take it back. I'm going to go, I'm going to create a new one over here just for fun. And I am going to start it this time. And, and as you can tell, I'm breaking my own rule that I just created three live streams with the exact same name. Don't do that. So we're just going to send a start command. And now we're in a good state. So in the reason I wanted this started, because once you attach a stream target to a transcoder, you can't enable or disable it unless the transcoder is running. So that's important to note. So easy enough. In this case, what this stream target is set up to do is effectively go to an alternate CDN. So in this case, I'm sending another stream out, in this case, to Akamai, which is, which is one of the CDNs available in Wowza Video. So we're going to go ahead and create that live stream. And again, you get back. The ID is the most important thing you're going to get back here because you're going to need to use that in the future for other calls. So what you then need to do is you then need to attach this stream target to a specific transcoder output. An output of a transcoder is effectively a bit rate or a rendition. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually call the transcoder and have it tell me what the outputs are. So you're going to make this call and you're going to get back a list of outputs. And you know, you'll see that this one is 720p you'll see that this one is your pass through. So you get back a whole bunch of different ones. In this case, I think there's five or six. Um, I'm just gonna grab the first one. So this ID here, and I'm going to attach my target to that output. And again, that's reflected in this variable. So I didn't, I'm not actually copying and pasting. Um, here we go. Now what you'll see is now we've created an output stream target. So we have our custom target associated with our transcoder. Now, when we actually do send a stream, the transcoder itself is going to send outputs not only to the standard playback URLs that would go to the hosted page and the HLS URLC, but it's also going to send a stream to that secondary stream target. And you know it's viewable on the, the playback URL you you sent in when you when you created that target. Sorry, when you say outputs, just so I'm clear that I understand, are you talking about different uh, versions of the stream um, from originally from the my dog is barking. Hang on. That's okay. Yeah. So an output. So transcoder will have multiple outputs. We can actually go look at one here and see. Um, So what we're going to go see here is if you if you look at your transcoder, actually I'm going to I'm going to cheat and I'm going to go over here in transcoders. What you'll see here is it has a bunch of different outputs, and those are the outputs that we returned in that list we just saw, and. You can attach a custom stream target to any one of them. In this case, we attached it to this one and you'll see it reflected here. 
And this custom stream target can do, um, like I said, it can, it can go out to a social media platform, it can go to an alternate CDN, or it can be just a simple, a simple target that does nothing but record. And that's what you would typically use for um, creating a clip. And the way we would do that is, is, in this case, we have our transcoder, it's running. We're not sending a stream to it, but if we were, um, when we create, when we first created that target and started the transcoder, that target's enabled by default. If we want to disable that target, it's pretty simple. We come over and we disable the target. Um, it returns a state that is disabled. So now this particular target in our example case is no longer sending data to Akamai. If this was a recording stream target, we'd no longer be recording. And that would be a little clip there. And if we wanted to re-enable it, we simple, we just, we just re-enable it. Um, so really interesting um, use cases. It really makes the Wowza Video platform able to do a bunch of different stuff. Um, and I know we're kind of running through these fast here, but I would encourage you to um, grab the Postman config and just play around with it. You know, the API docs will, will give you a good idea of the various options for stream targets you can create. I think one of the great uh, uses for those little video clips that you can create is you can repurpose your original stream and you can show little clips of it on you know, social media sites and it can continue to draw people to your product or your website. So the video clips come in handy even after your original event is over. For sure. Um, and then, you know, simply now it's really just tearing stuff down. Um, if for whatever reason you no longer want this stream target associated with the with the transcoder, um, easy enough to do, you just remove it. And what you'll see over here is if I if I go over here and refresh my page again, um, it's no longer associated with this transcoder. So, and then you know, if you want to clean up after yourself, if you don't need to reuse this stream target anymore, if this was a one time thing, of course you can. You can simply just delete the target and then it's gone. And in this case, we'll go ahead and stop our stream. And that's it. So again, what we covered today was how to create a live stream that records either or both MP4s or VOD streams. Um, how you can then get the list and the state of those recordings and VOD streams. And then a quick overview on some of the uses for custom stream targets and how you add custom stream targets to transcoders via the API. Gary, one of the most common questions I get on recordings with the API in the community forums at Wowza is, if I have multiple recordings, how can I quickly find the one specific recording that I need? If they didn't record, if they didn't write down their recording ID in the beginning, do you have any advice on how people can quickly find the one they're looking for? <laughs> um, probably what I would do is I would, I would actually, if I could, I would use the, I would use the call that actually ties to a transcoder. So a specific transcoder idea, if I had it, so that I'm only going to get the recordings for that transcoder and not every recording that might be in my account. And other than that, I would probably just grab the results and start narrowing it down by either date range or, um, or something else. That's, that's helpful. Helpful advice. Thank you. All right. Well, that's it for this session. Um, again, we will be posting the Postman config for you to, um, use, play with, and look forward to seeing you back at the next session. Um, any other questions, please see us at wowza.com. Thanks.